I want to show you how far I've come in such a short period of time. Watch what I've learned. And welcome to the new episode of my series, Blind Leading the Blind, where I, me, Molly Burke, a blind girl, travel the world meeting up with other blind people who possess a certain skill or talent that I absolutely do not. And today's episode is featuring a very good friend of mine named Ignazi Cambra, who is a world-class concert pianist from Barcelona, Spain. Ignazi and I first met nine years ago when I was actually training with Gallup at the Mira Foundation. Uh, he was also training with his second guide dog at the time and he is now currently on his third guide dog. We both got our first guide dogs at 13. We were both there getting our second guide dogs. He was the only other person who spoke English. He was the closest to me in age. We both work in the entertainment industry and travel a lot for work. So needless to say, we became fast friends and he certainly supported me a lot while I was an emotional wreck, um, still mourning the loss of Gypsy and, you know, trying to accept Sir Galloper Guzman into my life and into my heart. And so over the years, we've stayed in touch through text messages and phone calls, and we've talked about getting together and, you know, scheduling and everything is so hard when both of us travel so much. So it was really fun getting to meet up with him in Barcelona, where he is born and raised. Uh, and I did that back at the end of June, and I'm so excited to finally be sharing this video with all of you. So let's get into it. Oh my lord, day one, your girl's jet lagged. It is 10, 10 a.m. I have been up since 3.40 because Sir Elton John is very jet lagged and he woke me at 3.40 and I could not get back to sleep. So I am literally double fisting lattes. I have got not one, but two lattes and they're needed. So look, if I'm not like on my A game today, learning how to play piano, that's why. It's not because I suck at piano, I'm just jet lagged. Lobby. Lobby. I can literally hear my dad was just running an errand and I can hear him and Ignazi talking, so. Let's go see Ignazi for the first time in nine years. Go meet his new guide doggy. Yes, you have no idea who I'm talking about. You've never met. Hilarious, as we were on one elevator coming down, my dad was bringing Ignazi and his guide dog up in the other one. So we're waiting in the lobby now and they are coming down to meet us. So that's how we could hear them. There's like basically an opening through the lobby that goes up through all the hallways. So we could hear their voices. And here they come. Do you see the guide doggy? Yes, I do. Hello. How are you? Hi, give me a hug. Oh. I can tell the two guide dogs want to say hi. You two will be all partners at some point and you can say hi then. <laughs> the two dogs are being very good. They really are. They're being very well behaved, you two. I appreciate that. I assure you, Elton John and Ignazi's guide dog adventure had plenty of time to play later. Side note, is adventure not one of the cutest guide dog names, especially for somebody who travels so much and goes on adventures? I think it's adorable. He always makes fun of me for coming up with a million guide dog nicknames for my guide dogs, which is absolutely accurate. And I make fun of him because he comes up with a zero. So I came up with one for her and I call her Addie. Okay, so my friend Ignazi, we're like crossing the street to walk to his parents' place and he has the, a remote to control the lights. No, it doesn't control the actual light. It just <laughs> makes the lights, the, the audio signal or whatever it's called. Beep. That's amazing though, you don't have to like find the post and hit the button. No, you know where it is. And it's also practical to actually find the lights because you can also use it inside the subway to find like the, the machine that sells the tickets. You do this and it beeps so that you know where it is. Oh, I am so jealous, what the hell? Elton is much slower than Ignazi's dog. Yes. <laughs> Adventures off and away, Elton's back here taking it easy in jet lag mode. All right, doggies. Oh. <laughs> I really need to see more about this remote thing later and I want to okay actually I'm very curious because you've traveled all over the world what are like accessibility features here in Barcelona that you haven't noticed in other countries this remote thing is something that it, that's very practical although Barcelona is not the only place that has it like Paris has something like that too it's actually a bit more sophisticated I would say because that one, the, the remote actually speaks. This, this remote is... Can I feel it? Oh yeah, yeah. Look, it's, a, it's like from the 90s, I think. <laughs> and it's broken also. Mine 
It's tiny. That's the remote, very high tech situation we've oh, got yeah. here. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about an IR remote from, I really think these started being uh, handed to people in the 90s. And we still don't have them in North America. And you guys have had them since the 90s here. Yeah. So basically when, when I was 10, 11, whatever, that I started going back and forth from, from school to home with my cane, no dog yet, somebody gave me one of these so that I didn't die crossing this uh, big street. And it was exactly the same one. Of course, I lost it. And then when I, when I came back to Barcelona from the US, I, I went and, and got another one. And then that one's broken too, but it still works. And after all of our catching up we did, we finally got down to talking about Ignazi's story as it relates to becoming a touring concert pianist as a blind musician. I want to know, first off, how old were you when you started playing piano? Six. And what made you get into playing piano? Oh, my brother played piano, and I think I liked it, and my mother just sent me to the piano lessons. Did you have a good piano teacher? Like, oh, for sure. I mean, that's 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 very important. Like, if you, I think what there are certain things um, that are very hard to learn after a certain age. I, I will never say impossible, but there are certain things that um, just just physical things with the hand that you know if you if you if you start playing piano when you're ten or eleven or twelve. Um, I mean, and there are cases of people who've done that and they've been very successful. There's no reason why you couldn't, but it, it's just so much harder. I tried to learn in piano. Do you remember this? Yeah, this was so hard. It was so hard and my piano teacher kept telling me to look at the music sheet while I played and like, I couldn't see it. Yeah, that would work. And it really drove me nuts. Do you remember that? Yeah, it was terrible. She kept being like, look at the music when you play. And I was like, I quite literally well, can't in, see it. In her defense, it's, it's a very normal thing for children to not want to look at the music when they play because they try to memorize uh, music in terms of the keyboard. Mm. So it would be a normal thing for a teacher to say like, uh, look at the music. She's not looking at the music. And you know, of course, depending on, on how much the teacher understands the situation, uh, maybe she, she was really trying to be a good teacher. I don't know. Do you read music braille or do you do everything by ear? I do read music braille, which doesn't mean I use it all the time. Um, but I do read it and I, I of course, I, I can use it. Um, it's just very slow. Mm -hmm. Well, that's braille in general. Oh, braille in general is just slow. my YouTube videos. Is it? I did a YouTube video about music braille. I'll link it below in the description box. There v you go. Very stupid. <laughs> Um, where I I, um, I talk about music braille and I eat Pringles. Yeah, Sounds know. like quality content to I me. Know. Maybe that explains why I only have two hundred followers. followers. Okay, like. Do you, so you, do you mostly do things by ear then? Like, what so is your process to learn It depends. Song? It, it depends on what. Like, maybe later at a piano, I can I can explain better. But basically, it depends on it depends on the type of music. Um, so, for instance, if I'm reading something that that has a lot of counterpoint, so meaning. Something where, where you have hello dog, where you have a lot of where you have a, a, lots of different voices, so to speak. So it's like you have all of these different voices that are that are going on at the same time that that, that together create like a piece of music. Um, and each voice is basically independent from each other, like a Bach fugue, for instance. Then uh, using Braille is the best way because you need to have that sort of that understanding of each voice independently. So how did you get from like learning piano to going to Juilliard? What was that oh, process? Oh, you go on the website and you apply. <laughs> I don't know. But like, what made you be like, I, this is what I want to do? I never decided that's what I want to do. Like, and I was telling you yesterday, like, I, I've never decided I, I want to be a pianist and I still haven't. And you could ask me and I would tell you, am I a pianist? I guess for now, that's what I do. But I, 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 I don't like, for me, I think life is about enjoying it. Like, you only get to live once, so might as well enjoy the process. Otherwise, it's not even worth it. Like, as long as I'm enjoying what I'm doing, I'll keep on doing it. And then when I don't, I'll do something else. So I know that I was the first blind student there. I don't know if there have been any after. I haven't heard of any, but I, I don't know. It's just, it's just a normal school with, with very friendly people. I, I would say... Like I think, I think because these places have have you know the the reputation they have, people 
probably overthink a little bit about them in the end. It's just a place where people go to learn from very good artists. Um, and so that, that's, that's why you're there. And for me, when I was at Juilliard, I was already traveling a lot. So I really don't feel like I got to really... I wouldn't say I wasn't part of the Juilliard community because I was and I made many friends. But I, I don't know. I, I feel like I didn't really get to live the environment like I did in you know, at, at Indiana or, or just because I, I was out um, a lot of the time and... Since you graduated <laughs> Juilliard, you've basically been traveling as a, as a concert pianist. So I play concerts, <laughs> yes. All over the world. I feel like I, literally every single time I text you, you're in a different country. Well, no, I mean, you know, wherever I can or where, wherever they want me, I don't know. We'll, we can look at it in many ways. How does being a concert pianist work? Like, do you have a manager who books your gigs? Do you... Do you have to learn new music for every single show? Do, do you have to provide your own piano? Like, how does all this work? So, in terms of, of, of concert bookings, it really depends on, on many things. There are presenters that will contact you um, because they know you. Um, but then, depending on what kind of agreements you have with different people in different countries. I don't know, here, I work with a manager, so if, if, any, if a concert comes up, um, maybe I'll, I'll talk to them and, and but you know I will I will let the manager here close that date um, because that's you know that's that's sort of the, the agreement and it goes both ways right like um, but it, it depends on you know the situation and the, but normally yes there is there is someone in the middle and then in terms of repertoire so normally the way I try to do it so obviously as a blind pianist, your weakest spot is going to be learning new music. You cannot sight read. Yeah. And for example, there are things like, for instance, now in, in September, I'm, I'm part of a, of a big project, uh, Schubert Tiaz, that are happening in, in Paris and in Lisbon with, with Marie Jo Pires, which is, she's a very, very well known. For this, I have to play a bunch of forehand pieces with her. Normally people, would of course practice this music but they when you're playing what, what's called chamber music when you're playing with other people you always have the score in front of you so that you see your part you see their part and you're reading as you play so of course you practice but you don't have to worry about memorizing anything i have to practice like anyone else would but then i also have to learn well like a total of probably 30 35 minutes of music that 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 I'm gonna have to just play with her while she looks at the music and I don't. Mm. How long would a full concert be? Like, like how an long hour and a half. Play? An hour and a half? Yeah. And do you usually just play on your own or do you usually have an orchestra? Yeah, exactly. Your... So on one hand you have the recital programs, so where you have, again, the, the, the different concert parts where you, you, you just play solo piano music for that hour and a half. Or then you have mm, concertos where you get invited to play a specific concerto with an orchestra. So a concerto is a piece where the piano is soloist. Of that, if you want, if it helps, I have tons of videos I can probably Oh yeah, send any videos you have to provide. Of, of what those things actually look like. But like, the, the, the concerto, obviously, the piano is in front of the orchestra and you are, you are a soloist with the orchestra who invites you for. So that, of course, you, you don't play for as long. You play normally for about 30 minutes, so the, the orchestra will have, for that program, they'll have like something like an overture, and then there's a piano concerto, and then there's intermission, and then in the second half they play a symphony or whatever, by, by, you know, on their own. As a blind person, I always say that my hands are my eyes. I feel like I have two, like, t there's two groups of blind friends that I have. Some of them are the ones that like, rely more on their ears for things, and the others rely more on their hands. I'm a hand person. I'm always touching everything. Okay, so your hands are expensive. You could pay a lot of money to play with those hands. So how do you like keep your hands safe? Like you hear about like J Lo having her butt insured, you know? Like it's like are your hands insured? Like how do you? What if no, you run the risk? No, no, I I have no idea. Well, it's happened to me that I've gotten like tendinitis from practicing too much or something, and then you know you just have to cancel. I don't know. I don't have my hands insured, and I I've, I've been told this many times, and I you know maybe I should look into it because. Like, you know, maybe one day I really destroy my hands and, and then I, I, I... You can't play but again. But then I always think, like, there is this part, and 
don't don't take me wrong because it's it's really not like that. But like the when you know you have to play, like for example, if right now tonight I had a concert, I would be here talking to you. But somewhere in your mind, you always have that. Oh, I have to play. Mm-hmm. So every like athlete, for example, if you're a pro athlete, like you have your say you're a pro snowboarder, you have the snowboard that you love to ride, and you can bring that to competitions. You can't bring a grand piano to all of your shows. So how do you make, but I'm sure you have like your favorite type of piano so, to play on. So how does that work for concerts? You have to, you have to adapt. Like, the, you know, you don't, you don't really have much choice. Like a violinist will bring their own violin, obviously. And like for, for string players, or most musicians really, except for keyboard players, their instrument is a big part of their sound and who they are. Um, for a pianist, it's, it's, well, it's not. You just you just go to the hall and you find what you find. There are halls that have very good pianos. There are halls that have horrible pianos. What is your favorite venue you've played? And what is the most iconic venue you've played? I mean, look, I, I don't know. Iconic, you know, you look at my bio and, uh, I don't know, uh, Carnegie or, or the Marinsky or... I don't know. I, I when I played at the United Nations once. I, I don't know, but th- those things are th- doesn't doesn't really matter because whatever is iconic for people is not necessarily what matters to me. Exactly. I, I so what's know, like, like that's why I want to know what your favorite is um, versus. For me, I guess one place that I consider special and I play there often because obviously it's 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 home. But here and while you're in Barcelona, you, you should go look at the place. There's a hall, Paradona Musica Catalana here. That's, it's a beautiful hall. It's, it's by, by a modernist architect here. And, um, of course, it's like one of those places that's like a UNESCO heritage site and whatever. Like, it's, it's a very nice place. But for me, ever since I was very young, I went to concerts there with my mother. I don't know how often we, were. we went, but we went a lot. And, you know, never in my life did I think I would ever play there. It was not even a, a goal for me. After finishing up my conversation with Ignazi, who, by the way, has always been so humble. I feel like ever since I met him, he just always downplays how incredible he is. Um, So he's truly amazing and he's always just been so humble, which is something I've always loved about him. Um, But after finishing up that conversation, which I feel like he he could have bragged and should have bragged a lot more about his journey and his success because what he does is incredible. Um, But we then ended up heading to a piano store in Barcelona where I was able to start learning on the biggest and best pianos there are. Ignazi and my dad are in one car with adventure. Elton, my mom and I are in another and we are on our way to a piano store. Ignazi is picking his piano. The expert is at work choosing his, uh, I don't know. His Art. piano. Yeah, he's, he's picking <laughs> what to play, what to play. The size of the, of the you, you will get an idea of, so this is what a concert piano looks like. It's so beautiful. Can you hold Elton Dad so I can have my two hands? Thank you. Okay, so is it, oh. I feel the depth. It's like open, is yeah. it? Yeah, so the way it works is this mm-hmm. thing here. Yeah. Uh, so this holds this. Okay. So it's only held by this stick, so you, you can take this stick off. And then it closes it. And then I don't want to cut your head off, if possible. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm out of the way. Don't worry. No, this is a grand, that this is a grand piano. piano actually. Okay. This is the grandest okay. piano, basically. Okay. It's as, as it's the best and the biggest. Well, yeah, the biggest maybe depends no, on the No, it's not the biggest, but it's the biggest. Best, but it's, yeah. And it's like, I mean, it feels like it's like six feet. Like this is a seven, a nine foot. Nine no? foot. I don't know. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's a nine foot grand. It's it's so two seventy four, I think. So yeah, yeah nine nine feet. You know, Ignazi, you just already know. If I had my own, it would be pink, oh my God. covered <laughs> in crystals. Well, Oscar, it I can sell it to you. Yeah, <laughs> Liberace, Liberace. Oh. Yeah, so you come come to this side. Okay. <laughs> do, do, do. This girl's blind. <laughs> Elton's very excited. Oh, it's over here! Oh, do you know, Elton's really excited. You know why? Why? Because Elton John plays the piano. Aww, I Elton. Elton John, no? no? Yeah? I thought they were on that side. <laughs> this shows what I know about pianos, doesn't it? Okay, so here are the keys. This makes more sense, because I was thinking, it's really long for all the keys. Are you... No, I thought they were... Yeah, 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 no, okay. This is, this is why I'm here with Ignazi, you know? I know nothing. 
Okay, and then there's petals under it. What do the petals do? So the let's see. So the right pedal. Yeah. Press the the, the right pedal. Yeah. And then press any key. Oh, I pushed two. So that holds keys. Like that holds the note. Like any any oh. anything you press just stays. The, the string keeps vibrating. Yeah, it does. The right. Uh, so the middle one. Yeah. That one's trickier. So for example, press it now. This is the middle one. Okay. So now. But it's the, those three notes that I pressed are, are the only ones that stay. Oh, the other ones don't. That's cool. And then the left pedal, uh, if you press it, you'll feel the keyboard moving. Press it. I'm pushing it. And then, and then you see the keyboard moves when you move that pedal. Oh, well, just no. What do you mean? Just touch the keyboard. I'm like, what do you mean? The keyboard's moving sideways. You don't feel it. No. It's impossible that you don't feel it. Nothing's happening. Do you feel that? <laughs> yeah, the keyboard is moving. You don't feel the key <laughs> <laughs> I can see this can is going to be quite film, a lesson. No, can you please film that the keyboard's moving? Because the, then, then I'm accused of lying. It's okay. Not. Yeah, it's, it's moving. It's moving. What? <laughs> it's moving to your right. I don't. Just a okay. little bit. So feel the keyboard is here and yeah. then put your finger here. Now press it. Oh, it is moving a little bit. Yes. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, just a teeny bit. Okay, you were making it sound like I'm crazy. It was only moving a little bit. It's like not that little. So th that moves the action so that when you when you hit this, the, the 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 strings, you're not hitting all the strings for each note, and you're hitting them with a different part of the hammer. So the sound is a bit more mellow, a bit softer. Okay. Wait. So. So when you press it, it's a bit softer. Can you tell when I'm pushing it or not? <laughs> no, playing like this, no. Like it allows you to, it, it, it allows you a dynamic range that's different, basically. Uh, yes, I, want, I, no, I know even little less little than I thought I knew. Really? And I knew, oh, yeah. I knew very little. So can I come see it, Mom? Yeah. <laughs> you have a, like a lever there, you can press it. Okay. Oh my God, <laughs> whoa, I just moved. Yeah, yeah. look so, at that. So basically you can adjust it that when, when you're not sitting on it, it'll just go up. So you can, wow. with, with, with your weight and the... Yeah, it goes up and down. The position is correct if it feels correct. I, I wouldn't say, I mean, people would say, like, there's the textbook way of playing the piano, but it's, like, everybody's different. And then we took a brief intermission in my piano lesson for Ignazi to show off some of his skills. I was doing an interview before a concert, right before a concert. Before a concert, I'm not in a good mood. And the guy, they had sent the whole mobile TV unit to this hall. And he's like, oh, but I think it's incredible. How can you tell? There's so many keys and some are white, some are black. How do you know which is which? That was his question. I'm like, did they really send you here? <laughs> <laughs> to ask me what keys were black and white. <laughs> After hearing him play something that I do not know the name of, but sounded very impressive and hearing that funny little story, we decided to play a little something together that made me sound like I knew what I was doing, even though I very much did not. <laughs> yeah, it has to look like you really know what you're doing, no? That's, they, they know I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, okay, so you just play Black Keys. Can I play more than one at once? Oh, please. Okay. <laughs> Like I know today. <laughs> I'm so talented. 
Okay, but you need to play more notes. You play one note like every 30 minutes. <laughs> After figuring out that I could fake it really well, I figured I should probably actually try to learn a thing or two. And it it went um, interesting, not very smoothly. Take yeah. the center stage. Thank <laughs> you, thank you. When I was um, five years old, which was 24 years ago, um, I remember this. Okay, so did you only learn the C major scale? I don't know. I didn't even know that was C major. Yeah, that's a C major scale. Yeah, okay, so how about you learn the G major scale? It's not that much harder. Okay. So instead of starting here, you start here, on this one. There? Yes. Do I just do the same Except, finger so movements? So you do... And then the, the second to last note, instead of playing the white key, you play the black one. Oh. Okay, okay. Okay, okay try, that's try, stressful. Try. Okay. Is that the correct note? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To start? Mm -hmm. No! <laughs> and I said second to last one. one. I got stressed! I got stressed! Okay, 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 again, again. There, right there I start. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One more? Yeah, yeah, one more. Yeah, yeah, almost. You okay. didn't play the last note? Why didn't you play the last note? Okay, there, that's where I start. No, no. Oh. <laughs> okay, 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 I've got this. That's, no, that's not, ah, oh, well, yeah, there you go. No. That one? Is so that, that one is the, the black one. That one's the black one. Okay, yes. okay, okay. And then go down again. Oh, and I'm down again. No, well, then you have to, no, but then <laughs> first you have to play the last note before going down. No! Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Always count the number of notes okay. in your head. Exactly. So, One, so, two, I, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven is where I go to black. Yeah, exactly. So the seventh is the black one. Okay, and then go down. I did! No, but no, you have to go down now. Oh! <laughs> Do you want to go to the next level, or uh, is this already a... Uh... Two hands. <laughs> yeah, I want to go to the next level, of so, course I do. Oh, I'm not, yeah, I'm not so, using the correct but, fingers. But it, you're doing mm, pretty good. That promise you're not using the right finger. Basically, so, I'm a prodigy is what I'm hearing out of your mouth. So yeah. And I'll take it. So if yeah, your yeah. thumb is finger number one, <laughs> okay? Yeah. yeah. So if your thumb is one, and then you have to do one, two, three. Exactly. Not like yeah. Yeah. So play one, two, three. Molly, <laughs> count fingers. I am! So, five, which is your pinky. Yeah, okay. Five, just play it with me. Five. No, 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 that's not. Yeah, okay. Four. Yeah. 
since I was clearly um, a natural talent and a professional pianist in the making, we had to talk numbers. This is how much, okay, how much would a piano like this go for? How much would this sell for? Uh, 210,000. She's a pricey girl. 210,000 because, <laughs> because you're a friend, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but Molly, if you take two, there's a discount. Yeah. yeah, can I get two for 400 that, or? That pink. Yeah, pink and oh, yeah, 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 No, the pink one's yeah. more expensive, eh? Yeah, yeah. Come well, on. I can, I can, we can make a deal. Great. Two yeah. for 400,000. <laughs> pink. Two pink. I feel like I've been flown deal. to Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Everything included. Yeah, I like that. I can get one phone <laughs> to LA. Who's the bench, eh? And wow, a, bench included. Hey, and a, and a thing to cover the keys. Be careful with the bench. It's here. Uh, oh yeah, these like small ones. Yeah, these that's, are the ones. That's I, like the one I had at Mira. Yes, this like the, yes, this like the one I I was taught on when I was five. After securing myself that fantastic deal from that very kind salesman that I will not be taking him up on, I obviously had to look at my other options that I will also not be purchasing. So this is it's exactly the same, but it's a little smaller. Okay, so would this be called a baby grand piano? No, no. <laughs> Okay. It's like, so in some smaller halls, you will use pianos like this because okay. it's, it's a very good piano, it's just not as large. So this piano can play on its own. So it's a, it's, yeah. it's a normal piano in theory. When it plays on its own, do the keys move? Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's like having a live concert. It's exactly the same. Or a ghost playing piano. Uh, <laughs> yeah. moment that I realized I was not going to be able to tell the difference between which was Ignazi and which was the piano because they were both more flawless than I will ever be, but I decided to take that moment to have my pop star dreams come true and pretend that I could play one of my favorite songs by one of my favorite artists. I'll give you a hint, it's Ed Sheeran, but you have to try to guess the song. Like you're feeling it. So, okay, put the Ed Sheeran again, and she has to move and do faces. That's okay, we'll see if I can pretend really the same, well. The same one? Mastering how to play like a phony, I was very hungry. Okay, so I really worked up an appetite learning Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, so we had to come get food by the, is it an ocean or a sea? It's the Mediterranean Sea. It's the sea. It's the Mediterranean Sea. And of course, we had to get the most Spanish things possible. So we got a pitcher of sangria, as you do. It's the cava sangria, delish. And then we're getting croquettes. Right? Yes. And what is a croquette? Croquetas is like, uh, oh my god, I wasn't prepared for this. 
it's basically a bunch of bechamel sauce with ham and chicken, uh, breaded and fried. Sounds delish. And then of course we're getting, I'm gonna butcher the name, I always do paella. Paella, I have to say my description of the croquetas was quite good. <laughs> Dig in. That's freaking good, ma'am. I'm, I'm eating one that's delicious. Oh my god. The paella is here. Am I saying it correctly? I keep questioning paella, myself. Paella, paella. Paella? Pa oh wow. No, I think it was better before. <laughs> paella? Paella. Paella. <laughs> I have to say, the lunch was delicious. The croquettes, 10 out of 10 would recommend. We ate so many when we were in Barcelona. They were delicious. And I also equally, if not more so, enjoyed my time catching up with my friend Ignazi, spending the day with him and also being able to share him and his talents with all of you. I think Ignazi really is a living, breathing example that you do not have to let your disability, your vision loss stop you from achieving your dreams because going to Juilliard, getting your master's in piano, I think that's what it's called, I could be wrong. Whatever, going to Juilliard School of Music for piano and then becoming like a world-class touring concert pianist. Those are the type of things that most sighted people could never even dream possible. And Ignazi, fully blind from birth, growing up in Spain, far away from New York City, um, was able to accomplish it. And I'm so glad that I could share him with all of you. If you would like to keep up with him, his career, his life, his journey, I will leave all his links as per usual, in the description box down below. And until next time, you can click over here to watch this episode of Blind Leading the Blind or over here to watch this one. Bye guys.